Hello everyone, it's the Motorcycle Muse here and today I'm going to be explaining how a motorcycle carburetor works. I'm also going to be taking this carburetor apart so that you can see inside um, and take a closer look at all the different components and get a better understanding of what's actually going on inside. So the main purpose of a carburetor is to mix the air and the fuel in the correct proportion so that it can then be fed into the engine of the motorcycle which powers the motorcycle. So the air is fed in through this port here in the carburetor and this port is connected to either the air box or possibly onto a conical cone filter, air filter and the fuel is stored in this little chamber at the bottom of the carburetor and this chamber is called the float chamber. The float chamber is fed fuel either directly from the fuel tank via this lead here or it will be fed via a fuel pump. So once the air and the fuel are mixed in the middle of the carburetor that air fuel mixture is then fed out outwards from this port here which connects directly into the engine of the, the intake port of the engine of the motorcycle so the correct proportion or the proportion the ideal proportion of air to fuel mixture is about 15 to 1 it can be as high as 20 to 1, in which case the air fuel mixture is said to be running lean, or it can be as low as 10 to 1, in which case the air fuel mixture is said to be running rich. So the carburetor works on a simple principle, which is that air flows through the venturi of the carburetor. So it flows in through this input port and out through here and into the engine. So this air flowing through the venturi, which is the middle section that goes the whole way through the carburetor of the motorcycle, air flowing through that venturi creates a vacuum. And that vacuum causes the fuel which is stored in the float bowl to be sucked up through little circuits in the carburetor mixes with the air and then is sucked into the engine so how is that vacuum or airflow created in the first place well that vacuum or airflow is actually created by the engine itself and it's due to the pistons in the engine the downward motion of the pistons. So I have a little piston here. This is out of a little 50cc engine. So the piston in the engine is in is in a little cylinder, okay? And it's moving up and down in the engine. And it's the downward motion. So the downward motion in the cylinder of the engine creates a vacuum. The input port of the engine will be open and that allows the air to flow into the engine and it only comes into the engine through the carburetor so it's, again it's just that downward motion creating a vacuum which sucks air through the carburetor that vacuum of air flowing through the carburetor pulls up the petrol to mix with the air and then that flows into the engine. So that's the basic principle of how a carburetor works. So the rate of flow of air through the carburetor is actually controlled by this throttle section here. So this throttle is mounted on a spring. So there's a little spring here and it when it's on, mounted on the motorcycle, it, the throttle cable will be connected in here. And when you turn the throttle using your right hand, 
to accelerate, it will cause this throttle to turn. As you come off the throttle, it will come back to its original position. And that's because the spring, it's called a return spring, so it always tries to return the throttle to the closed position. Now, this throttle acts on a little butterfly valve, which you can see in here. So as I turn on the throttle, it causes that butterfly valve to open. And as I come off the throttle, the butterfly valve closes. And as it opens, it allows more air to flow, flow through the venturi of the carburetor. And as I come off the throttle and the butterfly valve closes, then it prevents all air really flowing through the venturi. So at the bottom of the carburetor again, we have our float bowl. And inside the float bowl, we have a number of jets. Now the main jet is the one that feeds up into the venturi of the carburetor. So as the rate of flow of air through the venturi or through the carburetor increases, so too does the vacuum that it creates, which draws the petrol or gasoline through the main jet from the float bowl into the venturi. So again, the vacuum acts on the main jet, which sucks up petrol up into the venturi where it mixes with the air and then flows out into the engine. As the vacuum increases, so too does the rate of petrol flow through that main jet into the venturi and more air and more petrol means more power for your motorcycle. So the amount of fuel flowing through the main jet is also controlled by a little needle which runs through the middle of this carburetor. So this little needle sits in the middle of the carburetor, a little bit like my finger, or maybe I'll take this screwdriver. This little needle sits in the jet and as it moves up and down, it controls the rate of petrol flowing into the venturi or the middle section, so flowing through the carburetor. So as this needle goes up, the amount of petrol flowing into the venturi increases, and as the needle goes down, the amount of petrol flowing into the venturi of the carburetor and then into the engine decreases. And this needle motion can be seen if I look through, look into the carburetor here. So this little needle sits in a little needle holder, which I can see here. Okay, so that's just the needle holder in the middle that I'm tapping here. And I can see this little needle holder going up and down here. So I can move it up, and there I can see the needle in the middle. And if I take the screwdriver out, it just falls straight back down. So that little needle holder goes up and down. And it brings the needle with it. And you can actually see at the bottom of the needle where it sits into the main jet of the carburetor. Okay? So it's in the closed position there, and that restricts the flow of fuel into the venturi of the carburetor. As it increases, or as the needle goes up, the rate of flow of fuel into the venturi increases up until the maximum. Now the movement of this needle holder is controlled by this top part here or the vacuum chamber. So it's this this part here. So this vacuum chamber is called a vacuum chamber because it has it contains a vacuum inside. So it's a little sealed chamber. And as the rate of flow of air through the carburetor increases or decreases, thereby increasing the vacuum 
or decreasing the vacuum. It also increases the vacuum or decreases the vacuum in this little vacuum chamber. And inside this little vacuum chamber, there is a little rubber diaphragm. And that little rubber diaphragm is connected to this needle holder. And as the vacuum inside the chamber increases, the diaphragm moves up and it brings this little needle holder with it. So the vacuum inside the vacuum chamber increases as the flow of air through the venturi increases. And the flow again of, vent of air through the venturi is controlled via the throttle. So inside the float bowl we actually have a second jet called the idle jet. And the role of the idle jet is to allow fuel to flow up into the venturi of the carburetor when the throttle valve is closed. So in this position, when we are not turning the throttle, the throttle valve is closed shut. So that restricts the flow of air through the carburetor. But we still need air and fuel to flow in to the engine of the motorcycle so that it contain, can continue to run at idle. So that's why there is actually a secondary circuit called the idle circuit. You might hear it called the low speed circuit or the pilot circuit. And it is a restricted circuit which allows a restricted amount of air to flow through the carburetor. And you can actually see that there is a little hole in the side of the venturi here. You can just probably barely see it. And that is actually an opening for the venturi of the, not the venturi, it's actually the opening for the idle circuit. And from here, the air and fuel mixture flows into the engine when the motorcycle is running at idle. So the rate of flow of air through the idle circuit, I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that um, it can be controlled by a little screw called the idle screw or the pilot screw. Okay. So on this particular carburetor, here is the pilot screw. Okay. So I can take a little flathead screwdriver and I can turn that little screw. I'll actually just take it out just to show you. So let me, give me a second. But essentially, screwing this screw in or out increases or decreases the flow of air through the idle circuit or the pilot circuit. Now, this screw should generally be hard set. With most motorcycle, modern day motorcycles, this screw, as you can see here, this little end to control the flow of air, so it's not a very big screw at the end. But on most motorcycles, the pilot screw will be factory set, okay? And on most modern day motorcycles, or back in the day when carburetors were still used in motorcycles extensively, the pilot screw would have been set in the factory to make the motorcycle run lean. So by lean I mean that it would run with, with more air in the air to fuel mixture than is optimal. Okay, so that little pilot screw can be adjusted. Now, on most motorcycles, and probably on your own motorcycle, or any motorcycles that are sold legally, this pilot screw will be covered up. So it will, it will actually have a little plug. Okay, a little metal plug will be covering the pilot screw. And the reason being that it is, in most countries, it is illegal to adjust the pilot screw. 
Um, but that little plug, which is usually uh, it's usually made of uh, some metal, soft metal like aluminium, it can actually be drilled out, and you can actually adjust the idle screw. So the third jet contained in the float bowl is called the starter jet and it is part of the starter circuit. So when you want to start your motorcycle for the first time when the engine is cold uh, the fuel will have a tendency to to not vaporize but to stick inside the when it's pulled into the engine. So as a result to get the engine started it is preferable to have a slightly richer mixture uh, so that there is more fuel in the air to fuel mixture that's being pulled into the engine when you're trying to start it. Uh, and that will make it easier to start your motorcycle. So that's the whole point of the starter circuit. So in this motor, this carburetor, the starter circuit is activated. Take that little lid off this. It's activated by this electric plunger. Okay. So what happens here is that there is a little plunger inside of this, which moves up and down. It's like a little needle, I suppose. And it opens or closes the starter circuit. So when it moves up, <coughs> the starter, the air will actually be allowed to flow through the starter circuit, and that air flow through the starter circuit will actually pull few more fuel into the carburetor uh, and thus into the engine, and your engine will start easier. So we can take this little starter plunger off and take a look at it. So I'll just take it off here. I'll disconnect it from the... It's just held on with two screws. And it's basically just a type of solenoid. So that means that when an electric current flows through this circuit, it acts on the plunger via a little electric force or electromagnetic force which causes the plunger to move up or down. Okay, so with that, take that off and we can now just open it up. As you can see, there's no special tools required when working on this particular carburetor. All I need is good screwdrivers. And I can gain access to really everything. Okay. So there we can see the openings. There's where the two screws hold it on, but here we can see the openings for the starter circuit. Okay, so when we take that out, we can look in there. So we can see that again, it's just a little needle on this plunger. I'm just going to take that off. I don't want to lose anything. It's just a little needle, okay, and it moves up and down. So it's on. It's actually on a little spring, uh, and depending on whether when there's no electric current flowing through the starter plunger, or choke maybe you could call it, it it stays down. But when a current goes flows through, it causes this to move up, okay. So let's start. Uh, dissecting our carburetor. I think you should have a good understanding of how it actually works at this stage but just to clarify things it's always better to just look inside. So I'll start off with the float bowl maybe. 
Um, I'll just remove some of the pipes off it so that they're not flailing about when I'm trying to work on the carburetor. But just to draw your attention, the pipe at the top here, this is the one that where that feeds the fuel into the carbur or into the yeah into the carburetor, so into the float bowl. Okay, so fuel flows into the float bowl from either the fuel tank or the fuel pump. Uh, and inside the float bowl, there is a little valve. There is a little, well, it's called, the, I suppose, the float bowl because there is a little float inside the float bowl. Uh, and as it fills up with uh, petrol or gasoline, the float moves up. And as the float moves up, it it's connected to a little valve which shuts off the fuel intake. So once that little valve closes, no more fuel can flow into the uh, carburetor and as a result the float bowl will not flood and your carburetor will not flood with too much fuel. Now the problem with carburetors <clears throat> is that over time some water which can be trapped in the fuel that feeds into the carburetor can build up in the float bowl. Now the gasoline will actually float on top of the water so to get rid of the water you can use this little drain screw here and there's a little pipe here a drain pipe for the float bowl so periodically or if you feel that you're carburetor your engine is not running properly maybe it's stuttering a little bit it maybe it's because there is too much water in your fuel system or in your float bowl you can turn this little screw with a flathead screwdriver let's see turn it up okay so if i just unscrew that just to show you So again, there is our little screw for the float bowl for draining it. You obviously don't have to take it off, you only have to loosen it. And once you just loosen the, um, the screw, fuel will start draining out through this pipe at the bottom of the float bowl. So I'll put that back in. And I'm going to take off these pipes. So I don't need them on there. Okay, so to remove them, <clears throat> I just take a little pliers to act on the clips. They're a bit finicky. You would probably should have better clips on it. They just secure the pipe on. There we go. That's that pipe off. Same on this one. You can probably just do it by hand remove the securing clip there we go and now we can pull the pipe off so there's our two pipes that f that connect on to the float bowl okay so to open up the float bowl we have two Phillips or sorry we have four Phillips head screws okay so they will be they should be torqued on quite tightly Okay, um, you might need an impact screwdriver to open them, but what you will definitely need, I don't have an impact screwdriver, but this is a reasonably good quality screwdriver. What I do have is uh, the correct Phillips head for these screws. Don't take any old screwdriver like this one here. Don't take a cheap screwdriver to these screws because you'll either strip your screwdriver the head of your screwdriver or you'll strip the head of these screws you need to get a screwdriver a good quality one with a head that fits these screws exactly i have a little packet here of various different screw screw heads screwdriver heads and i found the exact one that fits these perfectly 
and it reduces the risk of me stripping the head of these screws. It might even be of benefit to replace these with little um, uh, bolts. Uh, that's what you might find on some uh, higher, better quality carburetors. But I've already loosened these, but they can be very tight. So make sure that you're not stripping the head of your screws because otherwise you're going to end up with a bigger problem. So let's remove these four screws. Each one of them has a little spring washer on it. It's a spring washer. Again, they could be on quite tightly. Last one. Okay. So, so with the screws out, I can now remove the lid from the float bowl. So looking at the float bowl, we can see this is where the petrol or gasoline fills into and sits in the float bowl. You can see that it's surrounded with a little rubber seal. This little rubber seal should be in good condition because it has to prevent the gasoline from escaping from the float bowl, which you do not want. When we look inside the float bowl, turning it up the right way, we can see that we have the we can see that we have the float here. And when the float bowl fills with gasoline or petrol, the float actually just floats on top of it. And as it fills up, the float moves upwards. And we can see just in here that there is a little valve connected to the float which I talked about earlier and we can see that that closes or goes upwards so it moves up with the float so we can see it a little bit clearer there hopefully you can see it moving up and down let's bring it in a little bit closer you can see that valve so that's what stops the gasoline filling into the float bowl so it closes up the entry point for the gasoline and it stops filling with petrol so with a little piece of wire I can actually remove this float so it's actually just loosely held on with a little bar, metal bar, so I can just push it out like that. So with it pushed out, I can pull that out the rest of the way. Okay, and with that pulled out, just leave that there. I can lift the float out of the motorcycle or out of the motorcycle carburetor. And I can see the valve is actually just barely hanging on. There it goes. So it's not a sturdy little thing. It's actually quite dainty. So you just have to be careful that you don't damage it. But that's it there. That's the valve. You can see that has a little pointy end on it. And that's what goes up into, it goes in here. So let me just grab it a little bit easier. It just goes in here to close up and prevent petrol coming in. 
and it, it just sits on this little tooth so I can push the little there's a little metal clip at the bottom again you have to be very it's very delicate so just be careful you don't damage it but essentially when I'm putting it back on I just clip it in to that tooth and that's how the valve sits on the float So obviously this is something that can get damaged, possibly can wear over time. So if you have problems with your fuel supply coming into the carburetor, damaged float or a damaged valve might be a fault. <clears throat> so with the float removed, we can now see we can now focus on the <clears throat> jets. So looking at it here, I have the main jet. This is the main jet. Okay. The, you can see it because it's quite a bit larger. And this main jet can be removed quite easily with just a flathead screwdriver or with a spanner actually. So I can put a flathead screwdriver in like that and I can just turn it and screw it out. Okay. So I don't I don't want to screw it out just for the moment. But that main jet <clears throat> you can possibly see if I just get that little piece of wire. I can stick a little piece of wire down the middle of it. It's probably a little bit too thick this piece of wire, but if I just actually take it out, you might see it a little bit easier. And this is the same with all of the jets. Okay, so you might actually be able to see, so you can just about see through it just there now. You can see the wall behind the jet through the center of the jet. So there we go. That's that's the exit point for the petrol or gasoline. The petrol or gasoline has to flow up that little tiny narrow jet. Okay, so that's it when you take it out. It just, it's a treaded, it just treads and screws back in. Okay, now when I've taken out this main jet, I can see here, I can actually see here the needle if you can see that too easily well you can see the needle at the end of the jet okay so that's it in the jet the needle in the fully closed position and again when that comes down the middle of the jet it stops the petrol flowing up through the jet so i'll just stick that back in for the moment because we then have our second jet which is the idle jet which is this one here and again I can get a flathead screwdriver and I can screw this out it's going to be a smaller jet because remember the idle circuit is not what we do not want to have as much petrol or gasoline flowing through it it also doesn't have a needle because the flow of gasoline through this uh, idle jet should always be constant. So when we take it out, again, we can see it's quite similar to the main jet, only a little bit smaller. It's treaded so that it can be screwed in and out. It can be replaced if it's damaged or if you want to rejet your carburetor. So if you've changed your exhaust system, if you've changed your air box system, your air intake system, then you might have to consider rejetting your carburetors. And when they say rejetting, it means replacing these jets with jets with either um, larger or smaller diameter um, passageways to allow either more or less petrol to flow from the float bowl up through the jets okay <clears throat> and this third jet here which doesn't have a the ability to screw it in or out 
this is for the the starter plunger so for the starter circuit okay so when you're starting your motorcycle and the engine is cold you hit the switch to activate your plunger to activate the starter circuit then the fuel will start to go through this particular jet the starter jet to start your motorcycle when you turn off the, the choke or the, the, the plunger the starter plunger it closes up the orifice and stops this um, fuel flowing up through this jet because it cuts off the vacuum which pulls up the petrol through this jet so that's the three jets in the float chamber as you can see it's all quite simple to work on you can actually if you're a little bit confused as to which jet is which or where it goes to you can actually follow it here so if you take a look at the main jet if I follow it down so if I follow the main jet down, where is it? It's here. I can actually see where it goes off to. So it it branches off here. So there, there's the branch off for the main jet, and I can follow it where it goes in the carburetor. So the main jet looks like it goes up along here, and then it looks like it comes up along here. So for the idle jet, we can follow it, and it looks like it goes down here, and then it follows along here. So we can see the groove in the float bowl itself, the line which the or the branch along which the idle jet flows. Okay, and you can see that the idle jet comes up here into this particular system here. Now you can't follow it exactly, you can't see all the lines or where the the circuit goes exactly, but you get a very good idea. And then for this the starter jet, I can see that it branches off just along here, so you can just see that, just there. So you can see the tree branches where the tree jets branch off. So it goes down along this jet, the fuel comes up along this jet and then branches off here. And then it comes up here and into our start their starter circuit. <clears throat> so that's the float bowl. It's not overly complex. Once you know those few things, you will have a good idea of how it's working. So the next thing we want to do is we want to move on to the vacuum chamber. So let's open up the vacuum chamber. Take my Phillips head screwdriver again, little tip before you open up anything on a carburetor or go through any go near any of these screws. Take a little a good solid screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, okay, and a hammer, and you're gonna give it a little bit of a knock. Okay, so do that for all the 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 heads of the screws, you're just Sticking either a punch or a good solid quality Phillips head screwdriver on top of it and you're just hitting it a bang. And that's just hopefully going to help break that seal on these, these screws because they could be torqued on quite tightly. Again, just be careful you don't strip the screw. I've already opened these to make sure didn't have any problems so I can go ahead and just open them up obviously if you do damage one of these screws it's not the end of the world you can take a look at my video on how to remove a, a screw or a bolt with a stripped head it's on my YouTube page but in this case, I've got them all off nice and cleanly with an aged carburetor, an old carburetor. It might be, it might not be as simple a job. Okay, so with that, those screws off, I'm just going to lift up the head of the vacuum chamber. Okay, so 
but that's it. So on the end of the vacuum chamber is this spring. And the role of the spring is to keep the is to keep this little needle holder downwards. So what's really when I push the needle holder up, it's the spring that pushes it back down. So the spring plays an important role. The spring over time can lose its springiness, I suppose. Uh, and it might need to be replaced when you're rebuilding a carburetor. Inside the, the um, vacuum chamber, we can see now the rubber diaphragm. So this is the rubber diaphragm that, that uh, the vacuum acts on. So it creates a seal between the top part of the vacuum chamber and the bottom part of the vacuum chamber and the air pressure below the the, um, the diaphragm and above the diaphragm differ so as the vacuum increases inside on the top part it causes the diaphragm to move up and it pulls the needle holder upwards so I can actually just pull the needle holder out completely with the diaphragm in place and that's what it looks like so it's actually a very simple system our needle holder is just a little cylinder it's just a cylinder with a void in it now what you'll notice is that the can you see it here I'm trying to show it there you go now at the bottom of the cylinder you can see that there's two holes and the role of two, those two holes is for airflow so what's happening is that the air is the vacuum is created by airflow going down this way so the, the airflow goes down through that cylinder and that's what creates the vacuum so <clears throat> and causes the, the the cylinder and the diaphragm to move upwards so the air pressure causes it to move up so you can see how the that's it when it's fully extend or fully up moved upwards in the carburetor and when it's moved down you can see down that it will be down like that so that's just the difference that's how the diaphragm works the little rubber diaphragm you want to if you take out your diaphragm you have to check your diaphragm for any damage is there any holes in it even any tiny little holes will ruin the vacuum so be careful that you don't damage this diaphragm it is very important for the proper working of your carburetor the next thing you want to check is your needle so the needle can wear over time can get damaged and it may need to be replaced over time so that's our inside our float chamber or our, sorry our vacuum chamber and if we look down into the vacuum chamber we can see down at the very bottom of it just looking down and you can see right down to the jet where the needle fits in down at the bottom there we can also see that we have some of the jets so here we have the I think what is the idle circuit jets come up here so you can see them there the lighting isn't great but there they are at the top you can see two holes the one on the left I think is for the idle circuit and then we can see another jet here on the other side and this is the jet for this is the jet here for the starter circuit would seem to be so you can see it just down there now the the second jet here so there's on the bottom side here again going back to what I was just talking about one of them is for the idle circuit the other one is possibly for the um, the atmospheric air pressure okay 
So that's our carburetor. That is basically it. That is all the pieces that we kind of need to see in our carburetor internally. Again, I can just take out this, going back to the main jet, I can take out the main jet. What slips out is another little piece, brass piece, a little fitting. Again, there's nothing to it, it's just another part of the jet. Okay, and when I take it out, I can see the whole way through. There you go. You can see the whole way through from the float bowl all the way up to the the um, vacuum chamber okay so <clears throat> just to show you then some other bits on the outside of the carburetor if I take this little cover off here it's just a little brass cover I can take it off there's probably a little nut or a bolt underneath here I can unscrew that to disconnect my throttle okay so there's no other way to remove the throttle so there must be a little bolt or screw underneath here that's holding the throttle assembly on okay we can see here that this this little pipe here this is just to allow atmospheric pressure to keep an atmospheric pressure in the in the float chamber or not in the float chamber in the vacuum chamber otherwise the pressures can build up and the whole thing will not work properly so this this uh, breeder tube I suppose you could call it this has to be it's just a little plastic tubing it fits on and off but it plays an important role in the carburetor I also wanted to just show you when the carburetor is fitted to the motorcycle fitted into the engine when the motorcycle is running you can check when it's running at idle you can check the revs of your motorcycle now it will differ from bike to bike but it's usually between uh, 900 rpm and 1500 rpm that uh, most motorcycles are meant to maintain their idle rpm so you will check that on your factory manual for the, your particular model of bike. It varies from bike to bike. But let's say it's about 1000 RPM, which it is on I'd say most motorcycles. If, you, if your bike is running at idle and you notice that it's running at maybe 900 RPM, 800 RPM, it's running too low, maybe it's running too high, maybe it's running at 1800 RPM, 2000 rpm you can adjust the rpm using this idle screw here <clears throat> so this screw here acts on the throttle assembly so you can see that the screw runs and it has a little point at the end of it so it runs through here and has a little point and it's it's touching off the the uh, throttle assembly so if I screw it in I can increase turn it clockwise I'm increasing the RPM so you will do it very slowly and keep an eye on the RPM readout on your motorcycle gauge if I turn it anti-clockwise I can decrease the RPM on my motorcycle gauge And that is basically it again if we want to take a look through our Ventori with all the with all the needles and um, needle holders removed and all the everything removed we can turn the throttle assembly with the butterfly valve and you can see it's basically straight through our Ventori so again this was the this is the passage through which the air flows into the motorcycle engine so it comes the air comes in from the other side at full throttle our butterfly valve will look like that 
so it obviously is allowing full flow of air through the Venturi and into the engine and that's how it creates the maximum vacuum and that's it closed again okay guys so I think that's everything I can show you on this particular <clears throat> motorcycle carburetor most motorcycle carburetors will be almost 100% identical to this. Any carburetor that I've ever looked at on most of the uh, later model bikes that had that used carbureted engines, you will recognize all of these components on them. There can be some complications on carburetors, but generally it's a, it's, it has the design is tried and tested and uh, that will basically be how it works you will, if you can identify all the features that I've gone through in this video in this carburetor you're going to be able to identify all the similar features on your own carbur motorcycle carburetors so I hope you found this video instructive complete if you have any questions um, just leave some comments and uh, don't forget to like my page, subscribe. I'm going to keep the videos coming over the next couple of weeks and months. And uh, hopefully get you educated on how a motorcycle works. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, see you later.